Hi, I'm Lindsay Licata. I'm 10 years old. I live in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, and today I'm going to show you how to make a midnight chocolate cake topped with a dark chocolate ganache and a raspberry coolie. Today, I'm going to first start off by washing my hands. You always want to wash your hands before you start because germs are not good in your cakes and anything you're baking. I have already preheated my oven to 350 degrees and um, greased two 9-inch round cake pans. Let's start baking. The first thing we're going to do is add two cups of granulated white sugar. Make sure it's even. Two. Next, we're going to add one and three quarters of a cup of flour. Make sure it's even. I like to use the knife so it's perfectly even. One and three quarters. Now that I have my sugar and my flour, we're going to add three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder, unsweetened cocoa powder, and I've already pre-measured this. Then we're going to add one and a half teaspoons of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and just a little pinch of salt. That's just any kind of salt, a little bit more. Now that I have all my dry ingredients in the bowl, I'm going to whisk them together. We didn't sift it, and we don't have to for this recipe, but um, just whisking it together makes it make sure it's all combined. Now that we have our dry ingredients, let's add our wet ingredients. We're going to use the same bowl because this is we don't need to use two separate ones. So we're going to add two eggs. Next, we're going to add one cup of milk. and one half of a cup of oil. Make sure you get all of it because it can stay and stick. I'm going to just use the spatula to make sure we, all, we get it all out. Put the lid back on. And then we're going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. One and two. Now that we have most of our ingredients in, we're going to mix it. And then we get to add, once this is all combined, fully combined, we get to add three quarters of a cup of coffee and um, that's our secret ingredient and this will become um, a little bit runny um, this looks very thick right now but this looks more like a brownie batter right now but once we add three quarters of a cup of coffee it becomes very thin even though I love using my sand mixer if you over mix this it becomes too loose once you bake it and it all crumbles apart it would be better, a cake pop recipe would be better if you over mix this recipe and that would taste just as good. I have already brewed a fresh hot pot of coffee and we're going to put three quarters of a cup. We're going to put that in. You want to mix this very well. It becomes lighter, the color, and um, right now we're going to switch to the spatula so we can scrape everything and make 
sure everything's fully combined. And it's just a little bit easier. And you can tell how runny this batter already is. Now that our batter is fully mixed, we're going to pour it into our 9 inch round, very well greased cake pans. And um, we're going to do about half. Let it drip. Pour some in here. Divide it evenly so your cakes come out at an even level and when you stack them they look nice and perfect and neat. After you pour your batter in, here's a quick tip. You want to gently tap your pans so there's no air bubbles in it and so you don't have big pockets of air. We're going to put our midnight chocolate cakes into the oven that's already been preheated to 350 degrees for about 30 to 35 minutes and we're going to check them at 30 and if they need an extra few minutes we'll add. We're going to put them in. Open your oven. Make sure you don't burn yourself. And set your timer for 30 minutes. While our cakes are baking, I'm going to create a double boiler by putting a third of a pot of water into our pot and then put a glass bowl on top for the ganache. What we're going to do is put one and a half cups of semi-sweet chocolate into our double boiler. than a half of a cup of heavy whipping cream. You want to melt it together and um, stir as, as it starts to melt. And make sure this, the water is boiling. And stir as you go. As we wait for our chocolate to melt, let's start our raspberry pool. First thing we're going to do is add one pint of raspberries into a little saucepan. And then one quarter of a cup of sugar. And we're going to have this at medium, a little bit under medium heat. And we're going to cook this so it all breaks down so it's nice, it's a sauce. And then we're going to strain it and we're going to drizzle it on top of the cake. If you don't particularly like raspberries, you can use any kind of berries. Like um, I've made it with strawberries, blackberries, any kind of berry really. And make sure you wash them really good though. We have three things cooking right now. For the raspberry coolie, we're going to make our heat a little bit over um, medium now. And we're going to start mixing it a little. And you kind of want to break down the raspberries a little. Once our raspberry coolie starts to simmer, we're going to turn it down to low. And we're going to break the raspberries down a lot. You want to make sure it's a, like a paste and make sure there's no big chunks of whole raspberries. You want to just press the um, berries up to the side with the back of the spoon and um, just mash them really good. While our coolie is cooking, we're going to mix our ganache because it's started to melt. And you'll see the heavy whipping cream is starting to get and look more like chocolate milk. 
the ganache is becoming really thick and we just want to keep mixing until all the chocolate is fully melted. And if your water is boiling too much and it's coming through the sides of the bowl, you want to turn it down to low and just mix and it will the as you mix the chocolate will break down a lot more. As you can see, there's little chunks of chocolate still in here, and you just want to mix it until there's no more like little grains. If you pull the spoon up and you see little grains, you don't want that. So you want to keep mixing and make sure it's all melted so you can have a very um, smooth and um, creamy ganache. Our ganache is almost done. Um, it's very shiny and the, you want it really shiny and um, once it gets to this stage and it's super creamy and smooth, you're going to take it off the heat and you're going to take your um, bowl out, bring it over to the table and you're just going to let this sit. You want to let it sit out for um, until our cake's done which is about 10 minutes. And so it can um, cool off so it doesn't just drip right off the cake. Our coolie is almost finished. We just have to do one last mix. I mean, it looks really weird right now, but once we strain it, all the seeds will come out. Our coolie is ready, and we're going to just pour it into the bowl with the strainer. And then we're just going to take the spoon and just stir it in so all comes out and all the juice um, goes into the bowl, but none of the seeds and the, um, none of the seeds and anything that could be a little bit chunky gets into here. Our cake has just passed 30 minutes. Um, we're going to open it and um, pull the wrap out a little and we're going to take a toothpick and put it into the middle and it's ready it didn't come out with any um, cake on it or anything carefully take your cakes out almost completely um, before you take them out just so they don't crumble and break apart. While everything's cooling, we're going to clean up a bit and get ready to decorate, which is my favorite part. While your ganache is cooling, every once in a while you, you should mix it because it will form this little layer of skin on top and you just want to make sure um, that um, doesn't happen and you just want to keep mixing it. Um, every once in a while and it will cool just a bit faster. We put my coolie into a, um, a container that has a spout so we can pour it into our squeeze bottle so um, when we drizzle it on the cake at the end it will look a little bit neater than just pouring it in with a spoon or pouring it on top with a spoon. Um, this, the coolie has completely cooled <laughs> Cool, coolie. Um, and we're just going to put the lid on and wait for the cakes in, or the, just the cakes to cool. Um, that's my least favorite part of baking, waiting. Now that our cakes are cool, we are going to lightly tap the bottom just to release the um, cake a little bit easier. And then we're going to flip it. Lightly tap it. Perfect. And we're going to center it and um, push it on lightly so it all comes down, all the corners press down. And the sharp edge is perfect. And then we get to frost it. Our ganache is ready to frost, but first we want to mix it a little. 
just so all the chocolate is all combined. We're going to take a big spoonful, make sure it doesn't drip, Whew, dripping, and put it onto the top of the cake. I'm going to use my offset spatula to help scrape it out. One more big spoonful. A little bit more. Just so we have enough. We put a lot on and we take some off. And you're going to just sweep the spatula across the top of the cake. And it's okay if it comes over the edges because we have to frost the sides. And you just want to keep going in circles. And you can put some more on and um, just get the whole top with thick coat and make sure it's even so it looks um, when you cut into it all the the all the the frosting is even and then there's two even layers of cake. Now we're gonna put our next layer on top. We're gonna do it the same way. Make sure it comes out. And then take your pan off. And you want to place this in so it's in the center. You can adjust it only a little bit so you want to make sure it's perfectly centered. And there's this lip of outhang of the um, ganache and that's okay because we're going to frost up the sides and this is perfectly stacked and then we're going to frost the top and all of the sides. This cake doesn't need a crumb coat because um, like we said before um, if you don't over mix it it will become crumbly so it all kind of stays together and especially if you really grease the pans really well. So. We're going to frost the top, big cloth of that on top, same way, a little bit more. We're going to make it smooth, you want this top layer to be super smooth so it looks nice and neat when you put the raspberry coolie on top. Make sure there's no big air bubbles or um, and make sure the corners are very symmetrical and they're not like poofy outside the edges and um, you want um, your ganache to come overlapping over this edge so when you um, frost it um, when you do the sides it all comes out and um, all the sides are perfectly frosted. So you want to take a big glop of frosting or ganache um, and just pull it around the sides and go back and forth in like a sweeping motion. And it's better if there's a lot. Um, if there's not enough, it will come like not cover the it and then it will start to crumble down and break apart. And you don't want that. Just so we make it really smooth, because I am a perfectionist, we're just going to take the um, smoother and just smooth out the sides. And it takes a lot of excess off, but it makes it look, still have that nice clean finish. We're going to do one last smooth off on the top. And we're going to take it off now because we don't want to make this overlapping and then fall down the sides again. Taking a damp paper towel, we just want to clean up the sides, but you don't want to hit the cake. Get all the edges and the corners. You want to get as close as you can to the cake without touching it. 
This just makes it look a lot prettier. Now we're ready for our final ink touches. First thing we're going to do with our cool ink is we're going to do just a little test. We're just going to do a little dot just to make sure how it comes out to see if I like it, which I do. So we're just going to drizzle some on top, and you can do this any way you like. I'm just going to do it in little rows, some swirls, and you can make it come dripping down the sides. I like the way it drips down, but I'm just going to add a few dots on the outside, just for a little decoration. You can do this in any design you want. You could do maybe like little flowers or, I mean really anything. Now that our midnight chocolate cake is done with our raspberry coolie drizzle, we better find someone to help us eat it all. It's a little big. Maybe my soccer team could help. Thank you so much for giving me this, this opportunity.